uninformed immigrants are at a huge disadvantage in court, in financial and legal matters, and also sometimes in life. Well, what can we do about it? I'll tell you what. We can train, teach, inspire, and empower immigrants to maximize their lives regardless of their immigration status. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. I am your immigration lawyer and host, Otis Landerholm, and this is the Empowered Immigrant Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Empowered Immigrant Podcast. I am I'm Otis Landerholm, and I'm so grateful to have you joining me here today for our third episode now of the Empowered Immigrant Podcast. I really appreciate your joining in. Today's podcast is called How to Be Empowered in the Face of Risk, all right? How to be empowered in the face of risk, and so that's what we're going to be evaluating, all right? What is risk? What is it about? And, and how does it help us to actually move forward and achieve the life that we want? Before we get into that topic, though, I'd like to share an inspirational quote of the day. And this is a quote that I have shared with my team today. And the quote says, the secret of getting ahead is getting started. I'll say that again. The secret of getting ahead is getting started. What is a project in your life that you've been putting off? What is a phone call, all right, that you were going to make with a loved one or with someone in your family that you have been putting off or resisting making? Let's get started with it. All right, and, and let's set some time aside to take action on it because that will ultimately lead to our success in life the more actions we take, some of those actions will be successful and some of them won't be, all right? But the more actions we take, the more opportunities and, and chances we end up having of reaching the ultimate success that we're looking for. So the secret of getting ahead is getting started. All right, that's my quote. Now, the topic for our podcast today is how to be empowered in the face of risk, Many of my clients go through life looking to minimize and looking to avoid risk. And it's not just my clients, it's actually people, right? Many people go through life looking to avoid risk, looking to play it safe. And I want to encourage you, who's listening to me right now, to not do that. All right. If we go through life avoiding risk, what we end up simultaneously doing is going through life avoiding opportunity. And the truth is, is that in order to take advantage of any opportunity that ever comes our way in life, it takes risk. Risk is required. That farmer who plants a seed in the springtime is taking a risk because he's taking, he or she is taking his valuable time and is taking his or her valuable dollars and buying seeds to plant them in the ground, not knowing exactly which of those seeds might come up. But if you don't take that risk and plant the seed, then come the fall, you're not going to have any harvest. All right. In order, to, in order to acquire and take advantage of an opportunity, which is the spring, you've got to take the risk, which is buying the seeds and actually planting them, all right? Smart action. Taking smart action on a worthwhile risk is how to take advantage of opportunities in our lives. And the great danger in life is to not take enough risks, to play it safe. We cannot get what we want out of our lives if we do this. And I know that immigrants fundamentally know this. And how do I know that? Well, it is not easy and it is not risk-free to pick up your belongings and to leave behind your country, your community, 
your social network, your friends, your family, and to go to a new place and to cross a border or get on an airplane or whatever you had to do to get into the United States, right? Whether you came in with a visa or not is irrelevant. It is not easy to make a decision where now you are entering a new society with new languages, with new ways of doing things to, to start on a whole new life for yourself, to create something, all right? In doing that, what you were doing is you were taking a risk to grab onto and to take advantage of and to create an opportunity to improve your life. And immigrants, that's one of the reasons why I love working with immigrants is because they had the guts, they had the courage, they had the motivation, they had whatever it is that it takes, the spirit, the soul, the will to, to make that happen and to fundamentally, completely, radically walk away from their past life and walk into a new one. And that's exactly the type of risk taking that I'm talking about here today. And, and fundamentally, any immigrant who has done that at that moment was fully empowered. Like that is what it means to be empowered, to be willing to see all the dangers, all the fears, all the risk, all the challenge, all the frustration, all the pain that's ahead, and to say, you know something? forget about it. Even, even in the face of it, I'm still going forward. I'm still making my decision. I'm still going to do what I need to do to improve my life. That is what immigrants have done. And that is what immigrants continue to do every day as they face, you know, uncertainty in a new land, in a new, in a new uh, society. So immigrants fundamentally know this. Um, but many of my clients, once they're here, now it doesn't match up with what they were hoping it would be. Life in the United States is much harder than ever they say it will be. All right. Uh, there's racism. There's uh, uh, there's challenges. I mean, it's hard to even open a bank account if you don't have documents, you know, it's hard to get a job. It's hard to like do what you want. So yes, you face difficulty. Facing difficulty is a given in life. All right. And it's even more difficulty for people who are undocumented and who don't have documents in our current society. All right. It's also inherent and more, and, and obvious in life for anybody with any type of disability, with anybody, for anybody, with any type of health challenge, all right? For anybody who's starting out in poverty also, all right? Anybody that starts out with any type of challenge has a hill to climb, has a mountain to overcome in order to reach the success that they're after in their life. But here's the truth, it's worth climbing it there are mountains that we have to overcome to reach and to achieve the goals that we have for ourselves, but they are worth climbing it. And sure, it's risky to go up that mountain. You know, heck, we might not make it to the other side. We might die trying, but we might as well die trying rather than die, you know, doing nothing. What are we doing with our time? We might as well go for it. You know, I'm going to tell you a story. I had traveled in Spain and then Argentina and then Japan and then China and later in Ecuador and, and lived in those countries. And even while I was in each of those countries, I traveled with a backpack around a whole bunch of different places. After doing that, though, I came back to my home and uh, my mother uh, was joking at me and, and, and joking with me and telling me that, you know, I had, I had traveled to all of these places as a, as a, as a young man, as a teenager. And then in my, in my early twenties. 
And my mom likes to joke that I did that looking for love. All right. I was, you know, dating girls and, and having a, I mean, I was having a great time. I wasn't just dating. I was like, I really, I was learning languages. All right. I was a linguistics major undergrad and I loved meeting people from other parts of the world. All right. But my mom likes to kid with me and say that I was just, um, you know, looking for love all over the world. And where did I find love? Well, let me tell you the story. All right. So, um, when I came back from China, I moved back, and this was in 2005, and, uh, and I had applied and been admitted to law school, and now was going to be moving to San Francisco to go to law school. When I, when I moved back from China to go to law school, I was home in the summer, and uh, on the second day, or maybe it was the third day, after I was back from China, jet-lagged and, uh, you know, uh, kind of foggy from my trip. Um, and kind of getting my getting my uh, vision in my mind still of what I was going to be doing in law school and what I was going to be doing now as I started this new chapter in my life. At that time, maybe the second or third day, my mom says, uh, she calls up the stairs of our house. She says, hey, Otis, uh, hey, come downstairs. I, I, I want to introduce you to somebody. And so um, I went down the stairs and my mom says, uh, I want you to meet our neighbor. And I looked and um, there was this uh, young woman who uh, was wearing a blue flannel shirt, who was sweating, who had like gardener's gloves on, who was out mowing her lawn or weeding or something like that. Her hair was all over the place, crazy. She happened to be uh, Chinese. I had just come back from China. She happened to speak Chinese which that was cool. And she happened to be like amazingly beautiful. And I was uh, looking at her and I was looking at my mom and I, I don't know what I was wearing. I was like in shorts and a t-shirt or something like that. And I just said, you're our neighbor. And, uh, <laughs> and I still smile just thinking about this moment because it was like, wow, you know, it, I, I, there was a moment where, uh, lightning flashed or whatever. Um, but that wasn't the, that wasn't the beginning of it. Um, uh, I mean, it was the beginning of it, but it, 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 that's not my story. My story comes the following day because the following day, I, you know, yes, I met her. Her name's Wendy. She's my wife. She's awesome. Uh, if you've, if you haven't met her, I hope, uh, I hope you do, uh, one day, you know, you can come to one of our live events. You can, you can meet her. Um, so Wendy's awesome. And, uh, but the, the story comes the next day. The next day after that first encounter, right, where it was just like, hey, okay, nice to meet you. My name's Otis. Okay, great. Good to see you. Uh, wow, you're our neighbor. <laughs> uh, the next day, I went for a walk. And the next day, uh, my heart was pounding. And she was our neighbor. And she, I had never met her before. And I was going for a walk around the neighborhood. And as I was going for a walk, I just took a risk. And uh, my heart was pounding. And I walked up to that door and I knocked. And I just said, I just said one sentence. I said, hi, Wendy, this, I'm Otis from, I met you yesterday. I'm going for a walk around the village. Would you like to come with me? Would you like to come with me? Seven words that changed my future. Think about that. That was a risk. I was nervous. I was, ner I was totally nervous. I was sweating. My heart was pounding. My, the palms of my hands were sweaty. I didn't know if she would reject me. I didn't know if she would think I was a crazy person crazy guy, uh, uh, like, or, or what? And then she took a risk and she said, sure. She got her jacket. She came for a walk with me and we went, you know, we walked maybe 10 minutes or so, but as we were walking, we were talking, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it was great. And by the end of it, I was like, Hey, would you like to walk again tomorrow? And she said, yes. All right. And now, you know, 
We've got our 10 year anniversary coming up. Now we've got two kids. Now we've started this business together, this law firm together where we like fight for immigrants who are facing deportation. Now it's like life is so much better. It's like one of the pieces of the puzzle. So now my mom jokes at me even more and says, look, I traveled all the way around the world looking for love. And where did I find it? I found it with the girl next door. All right. And how did I find love? I found it because my mom introduced me. All right. How, how, how silly, how ironic is that? But really, I found love in my life because I was willing to take a risk. And thank goodness, my wife and the mother of my children was willing to take a risk with me also. All right, because how could she have possibly known that that you know? Heck, I could have been a a, a crazy madman for all she knew to saying sure to go for a walk with me. All right, but she said sure, and so there it started. Here's the question for you: What risk are you avoiding? What risk are you avoiding because you're afraid of what others might think of you? All right, what's something? that you want for your life, that you're avoiding because it's either sounds, feels too challenging or there's something about it that scares you or something like that. Take the risk, take the risk. You do not know what future awaits you. But here's the truth. If you never take any risk at the end of your life, you're just gonna be left with regret. The failure to take some risks ends up just leading to regret. And you don't want that. Life is too short. So take a risk. What's one risk that you can take today? What's one opportunity that you can take on in your life and go for it? All right. As I started with the quote of the day, the secret of getting ahead is getting started. Well, let me tell you, getting started is risky go for it. Don't fear it. Go for it. Thank you so much for listening to this. I'm Otis Landerholm, and this is the Empowered Immigrant Podcast. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Empowered Immigrant Podcast. If you like what you heard, and if you want to learn more, please go to landerholmimmigration.com forward slash podcast.